Hi everyone, welcome to my studio, Diane here. Today we're going to paint a peacock from behind. So let's get started. Starting from the bottom, I'm going to draw, before I paint, the, um, the rough outline of the bird's tail, which looks like a wonderful skirt, doesn't it, in a way. And uh, so then the body of the bird comes up here, and then he has quite a long neck, especially in this particular version, and uh, gradually gets a little bit thinner. And then we have his head coming over and his beak and his eye. So there we are, there's Mr. Peacock. <coughs> and uh, th this particular version is a very loose interpretation of a peacock. Um, and his tail is going to be, first of all, we're going to wet tail area and I'm using the same colors that I always use um, starting with Conacridone gold um, we're going to drop in some areas of Conacridone gold like that and put some down this side as well and then I'm going to drop in some cobalt blue down the middle here and where it overlaps, it's obviously going to run. We'll put a few bits down here. I have done this painting before, so I'm basically trying to recreate what I did when I did it before. And we're going to put some Caribbean blue as well, which I didn't use last time I did this painting because I didn't have any. It's a new color for me. So this is kind of the background, and we keep the bottom edge irregular. Just do that down there, and I can already see that I need to put more nacridone in here. I'm going to jump that out to the side of him a little bit to give some more movement. There we are, and some more blue here and don't worry if the colours mix on your brush a bit because that's only going to improve the whole effect. I'll put some more jumps of that down there. Just try to be a little bit free with this and then we'll put some, some more there and then we're going to so we're going to let that um, spread and dry a little bit. And while that's happening, we will pick up um, Caribbean blue, maybe a little bit of black to really darken that down. And I'm going to drop that in for his head area. And just let that blend where it hits the tail. Take that all the way up to the top. And I'm going to assume that he has a yellow beak, so we'll keep that clear. So while we have this colour, we'll put a few more dark areas in down here, which are still going to blend, because it's still wet. This is the kind of painting where, with the best will in the world, you're never ever going to do the same thing twice. So when I put more colour in, I'm going to um, just put it over where the same colour is underneath. So we're just making a pattern like that. I'm not even using a reference photo, only using the photo of the painting that I did before. So we're going to get further and further away from reality here but um, you know if you're doing a design you don't worry too much about accuracy you, you worry about the way the colors work together and the whole design hangs different way of painting and just emphasize the darkness of this area up here. Not, not painting it so every little tiny bit is covered evenly, 
but just making sure there's plenty of strength there. And I'm going to um, come in with some more quinacridone here and let that blend to go sort of greenish. greenish down here greenish some loose feathers down there and here perhaps. And I'm going to do some spatter around him when this is nearer to completion. And maybe we'll put some smaller Caribbean blue dots up here. You put it, if you use the paint quite thick, even if you're putting it into wet, if it's not too wet, then it will hold its shape reasonably, a little bit anyway. It's going to blur but it will hold its shape reasonably if you make it pretty thick. And I'm going to just lift the colour out there a little bit, where the light is falling on, falling on him. Okay, I think I'm going to let that dry. And I won't dry it with a um, hair dryer. I was going to say vacuum cleaner, that wouldn't work, would it? I won't dry it with a vacuum cleaner or a hair dryer. I'm going to let that blend of its own accord. Okay, so the first stage is dry now. And so I'm going to carry on with the uh, enhancing the colour on the tail of the peacock and also working on his uh, face and his neck as well. And one of the beautiful things about watercolour is that you can lift it out a little bit if you feel, if you feel that um, it's gone a little bit too dark or that you haven't quite got the shape right or something like that. You can, you can come in with your brush and you can lift out the paint a little bit, just loosen it up a bit, re-wetting it in other words, and you can drop more colours into there if you feel that way inclined. Um, so I'm going to just uh, reach for a little bit of mauve here and I'm going to put some, some mauve in there and not blend it in but just uh, touch it in a little bit, maybe lift out some of the blue and then touch in a bit more of the mauve just to give a little bit more texture and a colour texture to that area of the peacock, make him a little bit less geometrically regular. And uh, you can just play around with the colours a little bit, making some more darks, making areas much darker, some darker, much darker than others, which will, when it, uh, when it dries, blend in a lot, a lot more. Um, we can also, we can add um, more orangey colours. I, I don't know how this um, orange is going to work. This is a, a real true orange. I'm going to just try a few little bits of that just to see how that lifts the whole thing. A lot more than the quinacridone gold that I put there before. And um, we could also we could also come in with some um, ultramarine blue into some of these um, blue dots. Dots. What are they? Um, the centres of the feathers, which are so distinctive, and that kind of just counteracts the greenishness a little bit. I have no particular specific. Um, design in mind for this peacock when I started it. So we're just working on some source material of peacocks that have been photographed and painted by other people and uh, interpreting that as best I can in my own 
way, which is what I would suggest for you to do too, you know. Um, I'm just showing you the way, the way to paint, not what to paint. Um, I'm going to put some green in there, some nice um, chevening and green, which is a transparent sort of green. Yes, that's a nice um, bright green colour. I won't put it on both sides, just on on one side, like this. I'm going to bring this out a bit, I think. I'm not entirely happy with the complete symmetry we've got here. So this I'm going to bring out a little bit to the side. And we'll see what happens. with that when that's dry. And I'm showing you techniques really, as, as I'm sure you realise. So another thing you can do, if you feel that you've got too much pattern over the whole thing, you can just go in with some water like that and lift some of the colour, some of the design out. like that and then sometimes that's a good opportunity then to go in and um, and do spatter or some kind of more random effect so having lifted that out and I think I'll probably just go along the background here with the water where I just did that um, new painting there and let that spread a little bit, maybe even as far up as that. Encourage that out a bit. Maybe a few spatters up here. Um, now I've got the, um, the crown of the peacock here, which I'm just going to put the those parts of the feathers in. And I've used a gold pen for the pen for that. And we'll come back with gold later when this whole thing's dry. I'm just dropping some green in there and a bit more blue. A little bit more blue and then I'll let that run as well by coming along behind and just letting that move out. And I'm going to pick up some quinacridone gold and pop that in on this side. And um, if you mix um, violet, purple, uh, this is basically dioxazine purple uh, with green, you can come up with quite a dark colour. And I'm going to just put some dark marks at the bottoms of these feathers. It makes a dark bluey green.
You never know quite how a painting like this is going to turn out really. You really don't. Um, I think he needs his beak which is yellow, so we'll do that with yellow and canacridone. Put that in there. And um, I'm thinking about perhaps a bit of white. So that's going to be um, designer's white gouache. Most, uh, I think, um, the peacocks have a, a white mark on their cheek. And then there are white dots on their feathers underneath, underneath the dark bit, which with any luck will make the dark bits look even darker. I don't want to be too careful about it. There. And up here, the peacock has um, sort of, uh, I don't know, the feathers are smaller. So I'm just going to try that. I don't know how that's going to work out, but we'll let that dry. And uh, in fact, we'll let the whole thing dry. I think it's probably time for lunch. Or maybe, I don't know, a little bit of light there. We'll see how that goes when that dries. And um, oh yes, I've got a lot of white paint on my brush there. I need to get, get some of that off to save it. Because you can always re-wet all of your watercolours. So you don't need to rinse out the brush completely every time. Every time you stop using a colour, you can add a little bit of water to the brush and then just kind of clean it out like that a bit. Put that to one side. Okay, so we're not done yet, but that has now got to dry and I'm going to let it dry naturally, which is always better than using a hairdryer for obvious reasons. It's going to run and you want it to run, you want it to blend. And we'll see what we get when we come back in, in about an hour. So this painting is now dry all over and uh, the paint has kind of done its thing and blended and moved and done everything that you rather hope that watercolour paint will do. And now I'm going to um, make it a little bit more interesting. I'm going to use some coloured uh, ink pens here. I've got some gold hybrid gel this is called. I don't know what make that is, but it's a gold pen and I've got a silver one the same. Then I've got my white uni ball, which uh, is useful for lots of things, and a black pen to put in some emphasis in certain places. And I have absolutely no real set, um, uh, what's the word, intentions or plans or anything here to um, start, start me off. So I'm just going to begin. And I know that, um, uh, what do you call them? Peacocks have a kind of, I'm looking at a picture on um, Pinterest at the moment, and they tend to be teardrop shaped, the feathers, they kind of go like that. So I'm just going to randomly put in some gold teardrops. I'm not trying to follow any particular pattern. I'm letting my fingers do the walking and the thinking and the talking, hopefully. So I'm just doing lots of this and we'll see what happens when I've done lots of that. I did put some gold up here on the, uh, on the I don't know, what do you call that, the crown? Is that the crown of the peacock? I have absolutely no idea. So I'm just going to put some little dots and dashes in there and I'm going to do that to his beak. And then I'm going to uh, make his eye a little bit darker but then as well 
for the eye. There's always the need to put the light in his eye. There we are. So, and this needs a little bit of sharpening up to make that just a little bit more even. We might come back to the white again later. Um, the silver, uh, let's, let's go around with the silver in the same vein, shall we? Some nice movement here. This is kind of cool. Let's put some dots there. And this is one of those things that you could, you know, you could do lots here. You could, oh, I don't know. You could do loads and loads of things, but, but this is what we're doing today. So, and when I've done this, I'm going to come in with some spatter. So be ready for that. Get your um, <coughs> waterproof coat on because I'm going to spatter things around. And um, I don't know, should we do some, just some sort of lines like that as well? Just to make sure we've got plenty of gold on here. Um, I think it would be probably nice to have some really dark darks. So I'm going to wet my Chevening and Green, which is a sort of uh, phthalo green, I think I would probably say that was phthalo green. And this is phthalo blue and violet. So that makes a really dark dark. So wherever I've got dark, I'm just going to emphasize it a bit more. So that's next to the lights. And when you paint over the gold, the gold kind of springs back through. It's uh, water resistant. So just emphasizing the darks. I'm not actually even looking at the whole painting as I'm doing this, usually I do, but here I've just decided to just look at the bit I'm doing. I find that sometimes that makes you a bit uh, freer, if you know what I mean. If you don't try to consider the whole thing, but just parts of it. Okay, so there we are, that's that. Um, so the white, we could put some more white. Maybe we'll do some sort of scribbly white around some of these. I'm sure if you give this one a try, you'll do much better than me. I'm not very good at this kind of thing. Not very creative, really. There we are. Okay, so that's uh, time for the toothbrush. So, whoops, I knew I was going to drop that. I'm going to put a little bit of quinacridone gold in the sky using the toothbrush and I, but I'm not going to spatter it. I'm going to, I'm hoping, and probably ruin everything, but I'm hoping to do some big drops. That's it. Maybe that's a bit too much. Okay. And then with my um, paintbrush, some blue spatter down here. Not 
a little bit too big. I think I just want to make his head a little bit bigger. We're going to let that dry and then we will probably call it done. So here's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this peacock in all his splendour. If you did, please give me a like, make a comment and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video when it comes up. And really, I want to just emphasise that it's so important for us that you do give us your feedback and that you do subscribe and so on so that we can continue to offer you this content. It makes a really big difference to our situation with regard to YouTube and how many times we get shown. So we're very, very grateful for all your input as we, uh, as we grow the channel. So thanks again, everybody, for being here. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow with another original painting for you to enjoy. <laughs>